What is going on, people? We want to talk about these corporate papers. We want to talk about how once you learn how to speak corporate, you will then change your entire life. I was looking through some of the comments, and there, there are people here on YouTube talking about why you don't need an LLC. If your intentions are to remain small, if your intentions are to remain little, if your intentions are not to shoulder a lot of responsibility, hey, you probably don't need an LLLC. But if your intention, let's, like, let's talk about the Hustlers LLC. You're a single man. And you want to set up yourself where you can build wealth, build companies, and have it set up where if you have children or you get married, you don't lose half. You can do that with the Hustlers LLC. But the thing is, this must be in play before you get married and before you have children. This is how the law works. There are things that happen before marriage that the marriage cannot bring in. The marriage can't put his hands on. And you got to do this stuff before you meet that chick. Before you get that chick pregnant. Get this stuff going on. And one of the things that's really interesting with this is people don't understand that when you create a corporation... You, you make yourself a king. You make yourself a king of an entity where you can do whatever you want to do. And if you put enough time and let the entity get seasoned, it can get loans, it can be a tax shelter, learning about corporate law, learning about trust, learning this stuff ain't for the average person. If you do an average person stuff, there is no point in trying to do this. But if you've got a lot going on and you're trying to build yourself some wealth, you need to know about this. You need to be part of corporate nation. The United States of America is a corporation. The tax benefits, well, who gets the best tax benefits? Corporations. Who gets the best treatment? Corporations. This is what you've got to do if you want to free yourself from the modern day madness of average. You have a lot of people out here who don't want to do the work. Let's just keep it a buck of building a corporation doing the work, setting stuff up, be hustling, out here making it happen, shaking these trees, make the money fall. A lot of people don't want to do that. They want the benefits and the results of that kind of work, but they simply don't want to do the work. And that's sad because the work is where the truth is. Because let's just talk about you go ahead and you create a corporation when you're 25. And you do the work. You got a job. And in the evenings, you're working on your business. And by the time you're 30, you're able to quit that job, live well off your business income. Then this opens up the door for you to begin playing some serious games. This opens up the door for you creating, like, you know, I've been talking about my real estate endeavors, and I've had people talk about Roth IRA. I've had people talk about uh, IRAs and stuff. That is not the language of business owners. Let's say, you, you, you know, when you're 25, you start that corporation, you have an IRA, you have a Roth. At some point, your income is going to 
exceed the allowances. <coughs> Where that's just not going to work for you. It ain't that high. It ain't that high. So you got to play a do game. One of the things that I like to do is I'll go, uh, look at a mansion and I will go to the property records and see who owns that mansion. And typically based upon my casual research, these people who own mansions usually have four to six corporations because they're corporate citizens. The last one I looked up was off of Northside Drive. The guy owned a car dealership. He had two holding companies. He had a company in Florida. These are the games that you have to play to be corporate. And it's about design and intention. Like, you can set this up, especially if you get into real estate, where you're not paying any taxes. Because you can own real estate that puts money in your pocket and own some real estate that will be depreciated against your gains. I don't think y'all heard me. Let's say you go out and you get yourself $500,000 worth of depreciation. That means you can make up to $500,000 <coughs> and not pay any taxes. That's the game. That's the system. This is why virtually every millionaire has real estate as part of their portfolio. Uh, some people will go out and have a luxury home and two or three rental properties or two or three vacation homes that no one sits out. They don't do Airbnb. But at the end of the tax year, they can use that depreciation to offset their gains. And because these people are smart, they don't have this stuff in their name. Once you work on becoming, building wealth, you become a target. People be trying to come for you. The name is the same way that you would set up a company in Georgia. A holding company is an entity that's designed to collect money. Setting up a business in your name is very risky. That's why we don't do sole proprietorships. Because here's the thing. There's only a 10% of the country is well-to-do to downright wealthy. And you ever notice, if you've ever been on this path, that your life got a little bit better? And people that knew you stopped talking to you? I started acting strange. See, human, hum, the human issue is very, the human condition is replex, is replete in jealousy, in hate. So once you start setting stuff up, making your life better, being successful, you put a big target on your back. <clears throat> People will be looking for reasons to come after you. People will be looking for reasons to sue you. 
Hustler TV, you just snap your fingers and you make it. See, y'all make this complicated because this is the king stuff that I'm talking about. Whenever you open up a business, you, you, you decide what, it, what it's going to be like. And a lot of y'all are not used to that kind of freedom. Uh, the Roth IRA has a limit of 5600 bucks per year. You cannot use it as a business. I was listening to a podcast about real estate and hearing them talk about it weeks ago. It made me look at it when I wasn't really interested. Yeah, the tax advantages of real estate are so nasty. I mean, it, it's just literally if you create a portfolio that has a yearly depreciation value of a million dollars, you can make a million dollars a year and not pay taxes. Free and clear. You open up the holding company first. Holding company first. Holding companies first. The holding company is the first thing you will do because of how you have to set up your other LLCs. So you must set that up first. Never let your personal feelings about something prevent you from making money from it. If I start receiving funds before my holding company is set up, I don't even understand your question. Y'all are asking these uh, straw questions for events. Why would you start making money before you set up your holding company? A holding company is an LLC or a partnership or an ink that has been designated to collect money from the operating companies. Here's the game. You have a holding company. You don't do business with nobody. Therefore, it doesn't enter into liability. Just conducting business, that opens the door to liability. You create the holding company first. You create the holding company first. I have to keep saying that because people are like, I, I, I want to do this other stuff first. Uh, no, you create the holding company first. Then you create an operating company, which is a buffer between you and liability. That's how you do it. The DSL Chronicles, I have a friend who's still struggling many years later. He recently friended me on Insta, saw how I was living. We haven't spoken since. We used to talk all the time. People don't want to be reminded of how poorly they're doing. They don't want to be reminded of that. They don't want to, they don't want to talk about that. The thing that you need to do, and I'm probably going to add some stuff to the art of holding, some conversations about corporate strategy, because a lot of y'all don't understand because you are not used to having power. You can set up your corporate structure any way that you want to, as long as you do not engage in illegal activity. This leaves so much room for you to boss out. You can put it all under the holding company. T 
T-Wheel, I want to invest in real estate, but I can't wrap my head around 150K loan to get a 1500 a month gross. It takes 20 years to pay off, but I can receive the full uh, rent amount. T-Wheel, I, I, I kind of know where you are because I'm in the same place. But the thing is, you have to look at it in multiples. You wouldn't have just one property. The goal is to get 10 to 20. So if you're cash flowing, let's say you got a loan of 150K, the loan is $850, you're cash flowing at 1,500. So you got 10 properties, it's like six, $7,000 a month, even though you're very leveraged. I have this question before, do I need to set up a website or at least an email for my holding company? You set up a one page website with information on it. That's it. Had one dude betrayed me years ago, found out I'm making serious moves, tried to slide back in my circle like we've been cool. Don't you hate that? Like they act like they didn't do anything. Robert Harris, what do you consider a true millionaire, a person that has a million in the bank that's been accumulated throughout the years or a person who makes truly makes a million a year? A true millionaire is anyone that has assets that come up to over a million dollars. The, the month, can your holding company and operating company have the same business address? Yep, they can. I wouldn't do it. I would have a different address for my holding company because if you want to establish business credit, you're going to need a corporate address. This will not be a mail UPS box. So I would go out like, you know, the place that I used to have my offices, they rent mailboxes. So that's my corporate address. So you're going to need... They have multiple addresses. And this is something else, too. When you start playing this game, you got to spend some money. You got to have a corporate address, which you can rent. You're going to need a, a number that pops up in 411. So you're going to have to spend a little money. Can it further? Yeah, because like a lot of you have questions and I don't know what you're doing so you should get yourself an attorney a CPA and also have your attorney and CPA in the same room when you're discussing your business if all state taxes that has nothing to do with establishing a new corporation Pedro, holding company, first thing you do. It's the first thing you do because you need the holding company to form the other company, so you can't do it no other way. The holding company has to own the operating company. And I don't like DBAs doing business as, just do it as uh, the LAC that you're going to do the business under. Villanova, should our holding company and operating companies? Uh, the holding company, usually good practice is to have that, but you don't have to. And I would not have operating company in my LLC. You don't have to do that. Once you get this game, because, like, I mean, my time at business environments, this is where I learned a lot of this stuff. Serve me very well because I'm going to have a living trust, a holding company, an operating company for my real estate company. I'm going to have layers of protection because, you know, the, any of the, property, the property that I buy is not going to be in my name. 
And I'm thinking of doing an Airbnb play of renting a property and see if I can make more money than the rent. Thank you, Stephen Young. You see, when you get into this corporate business, you make yourself a king. You give yourself so many options. And time is your friend. The older you're properly set up and seasoned, you paid your taxes, you paid your administration fee, it can do so much because it can be a buffer between you and the rest of the world. Do name is you you got all kind of crazy stuff going on, man. You can only practice in the state with that license. You cannot come to Georgia with a Tennessee license. If you're doing something that needs a license, you're gonna have to go ahead and get a Georgia license. You could be your registered agent if you want to. Uh, the G Vinci Fitness, that should be working, it's Hustler. Let me go ahead and look at that. Let me make sure while I'm here. It's Hustle. That's the code, my bad, it's Hustle. Let's see. It is, the promo code is hustle, not hustler. That's why it's not working. Thanks to Venture Fitness for letting me know that. I, I don't have a cash app. Hugh Fine, it's possible to change current LLCs that under a personal name to be transferred to a holding company. You could do it, but see, you leave yourself open to making mistakes by going that route. Alex Shimon, I talked about all types of the separate checking accounts that you need for your holding company that you uh, will need for your Operating company. There are different collections of checking accounts. Jason, if I'm not mistaken, it'd be like Pepsi Company owning KFC, Pepsi, Frito-Lay. It, it depends. The art of holding. That's what, uh, that's what we do. Pharaoh Phoenix. What would I classify that money in the holding company is going to collect as profit, investment as a loan? Good question. See, as a business owner, you have an option to take that money. You could spend it back in the business. Therefore, there's no profit or you could take it out as profit. You have that choice. Grant Cardone. He had $50 million sitting around that he was going to have to pay a lot of taxes on it. So he's like, he called up Gulfstream and said, hey, what you got for me? And bought a plane with that money and ended up paying no taxes on it. See, this is the power that I'm talking about. You make your business better, make your life easier. So you choose, am I going to take this money as profit or am I going to take it as a dividend? You've got those options. And a loan, money that comes from your operating company, pass up to your home. Loan, because see, you, people see what I do and they think they, they try to apply it to their situation. I am loaning one company to another company. That's how the loans work.
Blueprint Rock. Well, can you explain what is a personal operating agreement? Personal operating agreement is a written document stating how you're going to run your business, player. That's it. Who does what? You and your boy Ed start a company. What this operating agreement would do was spell out Ed's responsibilities and your responsibilities. Operating agreement will spell out who gets how much money. So, you know, in case you and Ed get a little long in the tooth and get a little fuzzy memory. Robert Harris, I just found out I could buy holding companies. No, already have years of established business. Yeah, you can. But I'm going to tell you, the best ones, they're going to cost a grip. I'm talking millions. S. Brown, can I use a failed business LLC and change it to a holding company? Uh, I don't like that word failed. Why did it fail? You didn't pay the taxes on it. What, did you, what, what happened? Uh, like, you know, it, it failed. What reason did it fail? Dom Dominique Demond. Once again, your holding company is going to have a separate set of checking accounts that are apart and different from your operating company. Also, you would not be applying for third-party funding for all the companies. You would only, you would cycle the money through your holding company, and that would be your source of income, and that would be the business entity getting the loans. So your LLC is in no shape or fashion compromised from a structure standpoint. Just the business went belly up. Yeah, you could change it. Black Caesar, Uncle G, how do you pay yourself while running the business in order to prevent the piercing the corporate veil? You write out a check to yourself, to your personal account. That's how you do it. This is why you must have a personal account. Because if there are many business owners who only have business accounts and they've already pierced the corporate veil, you write out a check from your payroll account to yourself and you can put it as a draw or you could put it as a, you know, you could put it up as a uh, dividends, just depending upon how your company's set up. This is why you need these checking accounts. So you create this paper trail and everything is documented. Like an LLC is pretty simple. If you guys were starting inks and ink incorporations, everything has to be documented, including your meetings. Q5, my first LLC was created as a base. Taxes paid, no issues. That's why I wondered if I could change it to a holding account. I have two more LLCs. All right, if you have three LLCs that are already established, you cannot, you could turn one into a holding company, but those other two LLCs are not linked to that holding company. So it's not going to work. You got to form new LLCs or you got to sell the LLCs which is complicated, to the new company. So you could change it to a holding company, but you're going to have to do 
some some you're gonna have to go to your secretary of state you're gonna have to put in administrative change on those two other llc's and have them owned by the holding company no payroll comes out of the payroll account when you set up your accounts you got one strictly for payroll like if you're using the service like ADP, it makes sense to have a separate checking account for your payroll. Do name is when opening a merchant account with PayPal. Yes, anytime you open a merchant account, they check your personal credit. Blueprint. I know about how to go about filing for an LLC and get my EN number, but I just heard about personal operating agreement. I mean, an operating agreement, which you, which I like to do, is blend the operating agreement into the articles of organization. So you just got to write out who does what, who's responsible for what, what the company does. It's very simple. And once you start to make some money for your business, let's say your business is doing 10 to 15 K a month. At that point, you should go out and get yourself an attorney and a CPA because you got the money. Cause I mean, they're not going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. They're not. And then you could take any question that you may have to that, that person because they can become your, your business Sherpa. They can um, help you with so many things. Yeah, the five checking accounts include the payroll account. What are you talking about, the name is? So can I sell current LLCs to a newly created holding company? You can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can do that. That happens all the time in business. Or I will do administration. Because once again, as the king, as the man who owns the company, you can do what you want. You can set it up any way you want. You can put it together any way that you want. And I think many of you are just not used to this absolute power. Because one of the things <clears throat> that happens is you become omnipotent. You have so much power. You get to make so many decisions. And when you have your corporate stuff together and you're working really hard with your business, the dream, man, the dream. That's funny, Black Caesar. Uh, the name is, if you have bad credit, you can open up a regular PayPal account. See, PayPal has a merchant account. They have some stuff that you need to put your stuff in. I mean, you should go on to PayPal today and see if you can open up a PayPal account. Um, once again, I don't know your situation, 
And if you make a mistake, the mistake can cost you some money. This is why I'm just like, start all over again. I would suggest that you sell your companies to your holding company and create documents in the paper trail reflecting that. So there, there's so many ways to set this up. Now, there are many people out there who are talking about, you don't need an LLC. You don't need to do all this stuff. And to a certain point, they're correct. If you're not going to do anything, if you're just going to have a little small root poop business, you're not going to push on yourself. Yeah, there ain't no really no point in doing all this. Well, PayPal has a personal account and a business account. Just convert your personal account to your business account. You should be able to do that online. So part of this game is setting stuff up for maximum impact. Because the holding company strategy in the operating company strategy, I want you to think of a, a fort. And in the inner fort is you. So you have this holding company, that's one wall. Then you have the operating company, that's another wall around your fort. These are barriers of layers of protection. Yeah, a lot of these people, they're just scared, Romero. They don't want to do the work because having an LLC will require that you pay administrative uh, fees every year. It will require you to be on top of your game. It, require, it, will, it will make you more responsible. And this is why a lot of people don't want to do it. Because I want you to think about this. There are not that many people who are wealthy. And once you start developing wealth, people will come for you. You will find yourself in some odd situations. Because, like, um, essentially, if you're going to have a business and you're going to have, like, like, I got a new holding company that has close to 200K in this checking accounts. And these are coming from loans because if someone was like, Hey, Mr. Cameron, how come you just new company, which is isn't doing business with you, but it has all this money. Oh, look at this check here, this check here, this check. I loan money from my other company to this company. Oh, T will I have lived in, in I have had an ink for 11 years and it has established credit. Is it worth losing all that to form an LLC? Why would you get rid of that since it has established credit? I don't understand. Thanks for the $5 super chat rod for real estate. Thanks for the $5, Dunamis. If you already have a company that has a credit, business credit, why would you want to get rid of that? See, this is the thing with the LLC business game. You can always do more. You can keep that and start another company. Kenneth Ritter, uh, make your question more understandable. Because if you've got an incorporation that you've had for 11 years and it's got corporate credit, why get rid of that? What you trying to do? And this is why I suggest that for those of you who have businesses 
you're making money, go out, get yourself a CPA and a business attorney to ask these questions. <clears throat> you know, once again, see, the thing is, this prepares you like, let's say, 40 years in the future. <clears throat> You've uh, created your, your holding company, you have your operating company, and let's say maybe you have three holding companies. You have a real estate holding company, you have an e-commerce holding company, and you have a service holding company. You got money everywhere. You can leave this stuff to your kids. Charles Harrison, do I need another EN? What do you mean? <clears throat> what do you mean another one? If you already have an EIN, why would you need another one? I don't understand the question. Uh, Rock Real Estate. There's this guy, Erica, talks about that has 117 LLCs. You have to expand your thinking, folks. T. Will, I have a CPA. Just never asked. I'm cool with the ink, but now I see everyone keeps saying LLC like ink is dead. And a, a traditional incorporation is beyond most people. You know, depending upon your situation, I, I assume you have partners. I assume, because like you start an incorporation that opens up a whole nother door for investors because you're like, hey, I can sell you X amount of shares. And once again, be very careful with this because you could start a company and I can think you could sell up to 500 investors in one state before you start running afoul of SEC laws. Because, I mean, they're very, very particular about how an ink operates in the ink typically as you already know you have to have a month you have to have your meetings you have to have your books you have your seal and you've got your shares kenneth rim Ritter. yes a live a living trust can own the corporation Dominic Bung, I have two companies holding and operating. I only do real estate, so money comes in sporadically. What's the best way to show money moving through my accounts between transactions? If I float 20K between the two companies. Uh, if you have an operating company, why would you have to show income in the operating company? You're only going to file taxes on the holding company. All the money should flow to the holding company. All right, Charles. I'm a sole prop. Speedboat, random. How many DBAs can one LLC have? In theory, as many as it wants. But I'm not a fan of doing business as. I feel you should just go ahead and set up another LLC and roll that way. Because both you have to register them with the state. Stephen Young, do you need an EIN for each LLC? If you're going to open up a bank account for that LLC, yes. Kerry Brooks, are you using the same, you, you can't use the same EIN. Each different LLC must have its own unique EIN. And typically when you create the first company, you could get your EIN like that. And the second one, you're going to have to fill out a form and fax it in to get your second EIN. Game the Groomer. I already have an operating LLC, but no holding company. Should I create two more LLCs? Op Uh, gamer, the gamer, game, the groomer. If I were you, I would turn that present company into the holding company and create an operating company from that company.
You'll see the whole thing with the DBA thing is you still have to register with the state. And, you know, you get that DBA stuff. Just not a fan of it. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just not a fan. So one of the things that you, you have to do And let's go ahead and talk about personal finance for a second. Before, you know, you get here, you must learn how to manage money. You must learn how to save money. You must learn how to hold money. You must learn how to park money because this makes this whole game so much more effective. Do name is, you should do it yourself. Thanks, Speedboat. Because th this is the deal. Because, see, if you have bad personal financial habits, they're going to bleed into your corporate life. You're going to have situations that you shouldn't have to have because you don't know how to deal with money. And this will bite you in the butt. So you make sure, and this is not really dependent upon your income. I mean, you could be making minimum wage, and your minimum wage dictates that you cannot go out and buy champagne on a beer budget. You put the credit card back in your wallet, and uh, you should be good to go. Because one of the things that, that happens here is time. In the beginning, it's going to seem a little confusing. It's going to seem a little scary. But five, six, seven, ten years down the road, you're going to be glad you set this up. Excalibur, so the whole company pays the taxes on the income and the operating company doesn't. Yes, Excalibur, you're only filing one tax form, and this is why the holding company must own the operating company. The holding company is the parent. This is why having like three and four LLCs that are not related don't work. You would have to file taxes for each LLC. What's up, Lamote? Appreciate you. So a, a bigger part of this is understanding your corporate life. Like um, there's this guy, he's got this apparel where Max Chewing, and he talks about always keeping a hundred K in the bank because he's always got to send stuff to China. You got to learn how to manage money. Because, see, the more money that you're managing, the better your lifestyle will be. Because you, 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 you got all this stuff rolling in. Because, uh, essentially, I'm getting ready to create the operating company for my holding company. And I will be talking about that because what I think I'm going to do, because essentially here in Atlanta, real estate is crazy. They want $130,000 for a shell. And I'm looking at preserving capital. So I could find someone to rent a place to use this Airbnb. And let's like say the rent's $1,500, but I make $4,500 a month. That's a win. And I think that's going to be my first foray into the real estate while I continue to stack cash because I don't want to blow all my cash on one deal because I'm going to still need some reserves. So I'm going to save up some more money. 
Because right now I'm cash rich. And I like the feeling of having X amount of cash in the bank. And I'm going to keep stacking. But this LLC game, you know, because there's some of you who, once again, go out, get yourself a business attorney and a CPA. You might need to file a traditional ink. You know, if you're going to try to go public, you're going to try to sell shares. You, you, I mean, you know, it just depends. And you need someone who will listen to you and understand your whole business picture to advise you on which direction you should go because this is the last frontier. This is the last frontier. Once you get into this corporate game, once you start getting some stuff set up, man, it's going to change your life. How would you like to always have money? You don't have to wait to the end of the month to buy something. You don't have to wait till something goes on sale. You go out and get it. And also, like currently, since I use this house for YouTube, I am renting this house out to myself through my corporation. This is one of the things you can do. You know, essentially, you have to create a lease and you have to sign the lease and just rent it and then charge a little bit more because I uh, you know, only pay 4000 a month, but I rent it to my corporation for $5,000 a month. So I'm going to file taxes on that $1,200. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like it's going to be $12,000. And I'll file taxes on that because that's profit. That's how I'm going to play that game. And this will be part of my real estate company. Because there, you know, part of this journey is you going out and starting businesses, talking to people, learning stuff. Yeah, I get to write that off as a business expense. I get to write off what I pay here as a business expense. Legit, no shell game, no trickery. Uh, we don't do templates. Whoa. Let me see. No, nope, because each corporation is so unique and different, you need to generate your own articles. Jay Allen, how did you learn most of these tactics? Being in business. I learned a lot of stuff at business environments when I set up my first LLC because I was working with some crafty, crafty Jews. And then uh, I started my own business my landlord hit me to a lot of this stuff. So being in business, it for, because this is why being in business is the best education you can have because it's going to force you to learn and grow. Sure, you can be the New Mexico LLC, but once again, if you have that New Mexico LLC and you go to like New York and you want to try to do business in New York and you want to open up a checking account in New York, they're going to make you register that LLC as a foreign LLC. So once again, this is strategy. If you have assets that are paid for and you don't want nobody to know about them, yeah, you go ahead and park yourself a New Mexico LLC. But you cannot transact business with the New Mexico LLC in another state. Thanks, Keith Ritter, for the super chat. Because, see, once again, 
it's not super hard, but there's steps, there's layers, and there's strategy to this game. And one of the things that you got to do is understand what you're trying to do. And you got to understand the law. Each state has its own separate LLC law. The Real James 100. If I'm getting money from my side business via PayPal, what happens if I don't report that? I will only be making 10K from the year from the side business. Nothing. Uh, PayPal's reporting threshold is 20,000. So they, nothing. You can keep doing this for years. Robert Harris, if I get a holding company in New Mexico, can I start an LLC in Texas? Absolutely. But if the New Mexico LLC it is a holding company, you can start an operating company in New York. Yep. And that would be your advisable way to go. Because essentially, and also when you start getting into, let, let's say, let's say you, you have property. Let's say you have real estate that's paid off. You may want to put that in a holding company situation in New Mexico. You may want to fly to New Mexico, go ahead and put this holding company <coughs> strategy together and just keep it all in New Mexico. Because if you're on the property outright and you're collecting rents and the rents are going to a bank in New Mexico, you good to go. Hugh Fine, we travel for festivals. Do we need operating approval from each of state? I have no clue. I've never done anything like that. Audi Link Entertainment. Can I have my holding company in a tax friendly state like Wyoming in the opera company that owns it in Georgia? Yeah. A lot of people have their holding companies in Florida because they don't pay any state taxes. But see, this is one of the things. If you have a business here in Georgia that's making money in Georgia, you're going to have to pay Georgia taxes. See, the origination starts where the company is. So you're going to have to pay some Georgia taxes. This is why you need a CPA, and this is why you need your business attorney. Because I'm telling you, because you, you have your operating company in another state. That company is going to be responsible for insurances and other stuff in that state. However, the tax liability, if you're getting Georgia dollars, Georgia is going to want some of that money. So you will want to have your holding company and your operating company both in the tax-friendly state. And with an internet business, this is something you can pull off very easy. But if you have physical locations, that gets tricky. When I used to be broke, I used to cry about that shit. That's funny. Could I have an open and holding company while I have an operating company and put money into the holding company? Deprogram minds. Why would you just have a holding company without an operating company? That kind of def you might as well just have a regular LLC. Chris Monroe, be sure to have an operating company in the same state due to if you need to evict a tenant, foreign business get treated bad and many times. Actually, you know, if you have a, a rental company, and let's see, you, you have your rentals are in Georgia, but your company is in Texas or Wyoming or New Mexico. Since you don't have a legal representative in that state, you can't evict them. So this is why you probably need to have your operating company in the same state as your rentals in case you need to evict somebody. So that's a good point, Chris. All right, you could do what you want with the internet business. 
But yeah, you know, once again, if you're doing something physical in another state, you got to be aware of how that goes down. Because one of the things that happens is like real estate, like, like I said, if, you know, like if I have some real estate in another state, I would have an operating company in that state for the fact if I needed to evict people. Hector McCurran, I'm thinking about having a holding company in different DBA. I mean, if you got that many business ideas that are making money. So if I'm living in Georgia, because you live in Georgia, you have to pay Georgia taxes. And running an online business, but the holding and operating company is a tax free. No, if you run an internet business, you can get away with that. This is why I'm saying in that business, uh, because I'm just lazy because I, I was going to form one of my companies in Florida and go through those gyrations. And that's the reason Grant Cardone moved to Florida because he got a 13 percent pay raise because they don't have a state tax. So from going from California to Florida, he saw his money increase. And this is more mostly about knowing the law and how it works. Pedro, the same year educating us in is played the same way with private equity. For, private equity does a whole nother game. Private equity, this is a whole nother ball game. I'm giving you guys old school corporate game. But private equity, they're... private equity would do some stuff like this. Private equity would buy a corporate building and then take someone's name on it because when you have a name on the building, you can automatically increase rent. Because it's just not something, something address. It's the Chrysler building. It's the Ford building. Whatever name's on that building, you can increase rent. They have way more sophisticated strategies because they have way more money. You're talking about these private equity firms, they have hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. They're playing a whole different game. Oh, California ain't no joke. All right, so... Once again, what are your thoughts on the new tax law? It made their pockets fatter. Tax law reduced corporate taxes. They got more money. Ain't hard to think about. Everyone's happy with that. All right, so once again, you want 50% off of anything at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills. The code is HUSTLER. It's HUSTLE. It's not HUSTLE. Yes, the code is HUSTLE. Made their pockets fatter, man. Put more money in their pocket. It's like put more cheese on their whoppers. Uh, do name us, there is no bank that you're going to be able to get away with that. They're going to make you physically come in, show your ID, and set up that account. You're going to have to go into a branch. I think you could set up a personal checking account online without going into a branch, but business. Well, let's look at this, Curry Brooks. They heard a year to hold an out-of-state LLC. If your business is doing 400 k a year, what's $800? 
See, this this is one of the things. You know, to play this game, you're going to have to spend some money. You're going to have to have a corporate address. You're going to have to have a corporate phone number. And this is going to be some month, the money per month. You can't spell hustle without the St. Louis. That's funny. So one of the things that happens is part of this game is once you learn how to manage yourself and your proclivities and put these plays into action, in a few years you'll be able to do stuff that most people can't do. The DSL Chronicles, I got damn near 8K from the government with the new tax law. And that's even living in the Bay Area. Hey, Amen. Everybody's happy about that new law. Less taxes. Okay, so this is what's going on until Sunday. Everything at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills is on sale at 50% off until Sunday. The promo code is HUSTLE. And next Tuesday, we're going to have our first consult Tuesday, which I am setting aside Tuesday to get on the phone and advise people on their businesses. So that's going to be something that's going to be a mainstay. Just do that on Tuesday, and we will uh, go from there. Also, the money management program, this one, is on six pay, 50 bucks a month. You can go ahead and get that. Because there's two options. My more expensive courses are on a payment plan. You can either take advantage of the sale and get 50% off, or you can make monthly payments. You can't do both. You're not going to get a discount on the monthly payments. I got to wait for my money because you get the full course. You get everything padow, right there and then and there, and I got to wait. So I'm not, I'm a, I'm a nice guy, but I'm not that nice. The art of holding companies, you can get the 50% off, or you can do a payment plan. So there's a lot of ways to increase your Kung Fu. So there we have it. The promo code is HUSTLE. And that will bring you into the game. Pedro is a post office sufficient for the company. It can be for mailing purposes, for business credit, no. <clears throat> Hector McCoy, can I use a virtual address for a physical address? No, not for business credit. Yes, LLC is in Texas of 300, but need it. But 85 in Louisiana. Of course, I would love to get them all, but I make money in Texas. I also need to operate correctly. Yes. Damon, can you shelter some of your business profits in a self-directed RA? Then lend that money to your holding company to avoid the tax liability. Now, this is why I thought on taking money out of an RA. Don't do it. Yeah, you could pull the money out. You can loan it to your company and 
you pay yourself back with interest because that would avoid the tax liability for that money since it's a loan. But don't see, this is one of the things you, you re really don't want to be in the habit of messing with your retirement money. This is how people lose it all. So you need to practice financial discipline. Whatever money you have going on in your retirement accounts, leave that alone. Don't be borrowing against it. Don't be doing crazy stuff. But yeah, you could do that. But there's other ways to do that. Just take out a regular loan and you'll have the same effect. Appliance Boot Camp. A lot of the banks are making you wait a day or two before opening up your business bank accounts while they verify your business. Last time I opened up a business account, the lady at Chase told me that a lot of the banks were losing their business checking account charter because they weren't doing it right. This is just a sign that the game is getting a little tight. Oh, the DSLR Chronicles, I do the same thing. I'm not concerned with negative interest rates. The Real James 100, what do you think about arbitrage drop shipping items on eBay? Do it at your own risk. Jay Allen, what do you mean? Only on the phone or can you do video chat or Zoom or what are you talking about? Uh, call, you can also set up business online. I recently did that with Bank of America. That's interesting. Do name is I have a partner. Should I have them in the holding company articles? They should be a member of the, you know, the court. Well, you know, they should be a member. They shouldn't be in the articles. They should be a member of the LLC. Oh, the business consults. Oh, we could set it up any way you want to. Guess that's what I'm doing all day Tuesday because I just don't like, you know, having my life interrupted like someone to buy a console at 3 a.m. in the morning and that's 11 o'clock the next day. That doesn't work for my schedule. Uh, Pedro, I think including me getting stuck on the self-directed Roth IRA thing is because some of these real estate gurus teach us to use an IRA to buy and sell properties and dump the profits back into the IRA. There is one problem because I heard someone say that you can make an IRA worth millions of dollars in a few years by using real estate. There is one problem. You can only put up to 6500 to, and I think in one case, 8000 tax deferred. So the other money that's going into the RA is not tax deferred. You got to pay taxes on that player. So once again, this is poor people finance. You know, like you got a self-directed RA or a Roth with like two, 300K, that can get you your first real estate deal. A better option would be able is to buy real estate, create a real estate company and create yourself a depreciation base where you have some properties that are just not winners. That just, just garbage to offset your gains. So, you know, cause the thing is most of America doesn't have any money and the people who've got a little money cause you could take a loan against your Roth RA and all this other stuff and you got to pay it back. But that game is limited because you can only put so much money into these IRAs on a tax deferred basis. They only give you a little bit of juice. They don't give you that much juice.
M. Sway, I opened up a business checking account at Bank of America and got a 5K business credit card. And she said, I can ask for a crease every 30 days. Okay. And at least that's only part of it. They don't explain it until you purchase a product and get hooked on this compound interest. The name is uh, once you and your partner need to sit down and discuss that because it sounds like your partner is a silent partner. He just put up some money and you're doing all the work. Your operating agreement needs to reflect that. I don't have a drop shipping course. Black Caesar, there's all kinds of ways that people could be negligent and screw up, not paying attention. Not filing taxes. There's a many multitude of ways. The guru should mean to wholesale deals, deals through the RA. Put $100 earnest money. Make a $10,000 assignment fee tax-free that goes back into the RA. Once again, there's only so much money that can go into the RA tax-free. And I don't think it's 10 k But I've been hearing a lot of people talk about that. And I'm just like, there are contribution limits. Like you borrow a loan and put it back in there. Because the way I see this working is if your RA is already fat, you got like 500000 a million dollars in there. Yeah, you could play that game then because you, you can put the money back in there. But if you just got like a regular thin RA, I don't know. If you work from home in an apartment for your business, use a co-working space for your physical business address. Yeah, I mean, those are legitimate commercial addresses. With all the state and federal deficits, taxes have to top out at some point. When you start to take money out your RA and 401 k it could lead to some serious shock, sticker shock. Or... Yeah, because essentially, if you don't pay that money back, they're going to hit you over the head hard with taxes. Your boy Rich trying to get this Wi-Fi bread to invest in real estate, meaning while using my tr trucking business to fund it. Well, you, you, this is you know one of the things you know about creating a funding source. If you're not going to borrow money, you, you got to create your own money. You got to be your own bank. And like I said, you know, this is my policy on taking money out of your RA or your Roth. Don't do it. You know, if you got yourself a the Samsha Roth or RA, don't be borrowing money. Make new income streams because if you can't pay that money back, Uncle Sam is going to hit you over your head when you file your taxes. Hard. Black Caesar, they recommended you file your taxes every quarter. When you move to an LLC to an operating company or a holding company, Gardner Brown, yeah, I mean, all this stuff is public record. Your LLC, your incorporation, all that's public record. Your Facebook ads, you know, I got some weak traffic from Facebook. Because I started emailing folks, and this guy got this free book. He was like, I don't want your emails. I like, it was funny. Yeah, you know, whatever moves you make with your company have nothing to do with it being reported in a database. That's going to be there regardless. Unless you're in New Mexico, where they'll have the LLC in the database, but they won't have who owns it. So, yeah, that's going to be in the database. Uh, Appliance Boot Camp. I don't believe you could buy real estate with an RA. 
you can lend money like a hard money lender, but the money has to be returned to face a penalty. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Don't do it. Wasn't there in addition to the tax cuts and jobs act of 2017 that allows you to depreciate assets 100% in the first year that the asset is in service? Uh, look that up. I don't know. I don't know tax law like that off the top of my head. Gardner Brown, absolutely. Well, first of all, let's talk about this. They can sue your operating company. But since your business is holding company is not doing business with anybody, they must have a basis for the lawsuit. So they don't have any contact with the holding company. They could try to sue you and your attorneys go like, there's no basis for this lawsuit, Your Honor. They've not transacted any business with the holding company. And they just threw it on a lawsuit and had that thrown out. Yeah, you know, there's nothing you could do to prevent somebody from suing you, but there are things you can do to mitigate the damage. And this is one of the reasons that you have the operating car company at arm's length away from the public. Because typically for someone to sue you, you must encounter each other. So that ain't happening. I mean, you know, because, see, someone can still sue you, but, you know, piercing the corporate veil is when their attorney comes in and finds out that you've run your company improperly, this opens the door. They can sue you, and they can win, but if you have your assets properly segregated, they don't get. They can't go after those assets. So this is one of the things that you got to be aware of, because one of the things about business law is once you know the law, because each state, you know, some states have a charging order, uh, some states have limited liability that someone can sue an LLC for. You know, it really depends on your state, the law, and all this other stuff. <clears throat> I think Wyoming is similar. So you, you got to understand how this goes because... Once again, this only matters if you're making money. If you're not making money, you're just exercising, you're just exhausting yourself and wearing yourself out. But once again, if you set yourself up correctly and someone sues you, what they can get is limited. Let's say like, you know, I, I got my names on a lot of corporate papers right now, but it's segregated because essentially there's a few companies that are not actively doing business with anybody. So it's going to be kind of hard to sue them. So this is one of the things that you've got to put together. and set apart. So my the art of holding, let's talk about the differences between the Hustler LLC. The Hustler's LLC is designed for the single man. And it's designed how you get your life in order before you have kids, before you get married, so that once you encounter into those organizations, or institutions, you have some teeth to fight. So this is one of the things that you have to look at. 
Now, the art of holding is for general business. You know, as a man, as someone who's gone through, well, I had to fight a child support case and I got it dismissed because I thought what she was trying to do was fundamentally unfair. You take the child, I have no access, I'm not part of her life, but I got to pay you money. That was very whack. And because I had a company which gave me the basis to fight this thing, and I got it because we, we had to change magistrates because the one magistrate, and also she broke the rules, and I, I filed a complaint. I filed a 13-page complaint. So part of this is knowing the law, knowing your rights, and being in a position to enforce your rights. And when you own a company, you can enforce your rights. When you have a job, they just go in and rake money out your check. But when you have a company, you have a say-so in who gets what out of your money. That's the power of it. That's, that's the power of being a king. Because I'm getting ready to start a little real estate empire. Because, uh, you know, like I said, I'm looking at properties. You know, um, it's a lot of work. And it's more work than I assumed. And, you know, because I, I didn't think it was going to be this difficult. But every day I'm looking at properties. And I'm, re I'm listening to real estate videos. And there's so much to learn that I got myself a two-year curve here. And, you know, I'm looking at it from a cash flow basis. What can I buy that will cash flow? And how can I get into it inexpensively? Because the real estate market here is hot. I'm seeing properties go under contract four, five, six, or seven days under once they hit Zillow. But these are the nicer, really nicely, nicely done rehab deals. So once again, here, here's the, the corporate, you know, there, there's somebody up here who did a video like, you know, why you don't need an LLC. It ain't that hard to manage an LLC. It's not that hard to keep up with the paperwork. For your money, it's the best thing going. You would be a real estate guru in less than three years, mark my words. The game is wild, man. I'm seeing the game is wild. Mikkel Tavis, you can buy a house with an RA, but you must have the total home purchase amount in the RA. I assume that. But all the rent money goes back in the RA account. It's an investment instead of CD stocks and bonds. What did I say when we were talking about that? I said only the people who have fat RAs, because if you're going to buy a good rental property, you're going to spend... Uh, So, Mikkel Travis, thanks for that. Um, like I said, because once again, that money has to be paid back. That money has to go back because the books must be balanced. And once again, so once again, you, you have to understand how these things work how they're set apart, how they evolve. And like, you know, thanks to Michael Travis, I knew that you had to have a lot of money in your RA. And once again, the average RA doesn't have enough money to buy a bunch of houses. And also speaking of that, I, I've done the calculations. This one house that I was going to put an offer on, but someone already put a contract on it. If I could have got it for the price I wanted to, I would have been cash flowing at 10% on my money per month. And that 10% was going to go up over time. So that was one of my basis.
because there's a lot of people out here like, you know, because I've heard this one guy said, you know, you could get a Roth or a self-directed RA and get it up to millions of dollars in a few years. I, I just didn't believe that because the money that goes in on a tax deferred basis is capped. Michael Travis, but it's not for everybody and the rules are crazy. Once again, dude, you, you just confirming what I already thought about it. Because the government is not going to allow you to use this money in your RA on a really simple, cheap, and easy basis. They're not going to allow that. It's not going to have that happen. So, I mean, I, I believe the rules are crazy. Y'all trying to get in the St. Louis real estate market? And, you know, like, one of the things is, um, like, with real estate, I'm being very careful because the Atlanta market is crazy. And I want to get maximum dollars for my money and around here, you know, it, it is amazing. Uh, Michael Travis, I'm going to look that up because I, I want to be armed for the next time someone says you can use money from your RA to buy real estate when I know how the government works. And you're probably going to need to bring in some professionals to help you manage the paperwork. <clears throat> Chris Murrow, there's actually a lot of people virtual wholesaling here in the ATL. Lots of deals getting done. Wholesaling here in Atlanta is bananas. There's a lot of people who have set up with VAs in the Philippines who are doing all of the work and they just they just show up for closing. That's all they do. Because uh, I'm thinking about starting a little wholesaling doing a little bit of that. But once again, I got to take my time. I got to do my research. I got to do my due diligence. So, all right, I'm about to go. Once again, you can get anything at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills for 50% off today, tomorrow, and Sunday night using the promo code HUSTLE. Yep, it's HUSTLE. So that's the promo code, and I'm going to send out an email. Let folks know what's the right direction to go in there. So with that, hopefully you learned a lot. Take advantage of the sale or get on one of the payment plans to skill level, skills to raise your skill levels to participate because at the end of the day, you're going to need some money. You're going to need a lot of money. So with that, I will see you.